Hi everybody. In my apartment I have a bunch of low power lights and night lights, all of them incandescent and all of them going on constantly for a few years now with the exception of the occasional power outage. They are on all the time and I would just like to document a few of them to show what they are and how I got them lasting so long. And we shall begin this tour outside my apartment. It's a small building with four individual apartments in here and the only lighting inside the main entryway is just the small little lanterns outside of each individual tenant's door and that's mine up there in the top right. Inside here is a 230 volt 25 watt incandescent lamp and of course it's only on 120 volt so it's basically getting half of its voltage and um, dissipating only one-third of its rated power. You might think it will be one-fourth, but because an incandescent lamp is a non-linear resistance, it's uh, more, close, more close to one-third of its rated power rather than one-fourth when you have the voltage. And of course, because it is at half of its rated voltage, it lasts very long. This one I must have had here for three years maybe. I haven't really kept track of it, but it's been here going quite a while. And just on the inside of my apartment door, I've got another one of those 230 volt lamp. There you can see Sylvania 25 watt, 200, oh, it's actually 250 volt operating on 120 volt. So this thing lasts very, very long. It's, uh, I've had this one up here for another three or four years yet, and um, that's usually how long they last. I, this is, um, I've had to replace this one once or twice in the past, but they're good for at least two years, maybe three, five years possibly. And of course I got this other one, got these two separate individual um, lamps, lamp sockets here with the pool chain. I keep this one all the time. This is on all the time. Same thing as the one on the outside of the door because those are both on the same switch, on the, the same wall switch. So keep them on all the time. And this one, if I ever do need any extra light here in the entryway, I just turn that one on. That's a, I don't know, 60, 75 watt, something like that. But yeah, that one stays off most of the time. And if you're wondering where I got these high voltage lamps from, the 230 or 250 volt lamp, I don't remember. I must have got them at a flea market or something many years ago. I've got quite a few more of these left to go through. And these are just ordinary medium screw base, the Edison medium screw base. And I also just discovered um, a few minutes ago that I apparently documented exactly when I started using this thing. It's 2014, October 8th. So we're looking at one and a half years that this thing has been working. So, and I expect at least another year and a half to go for this before it'll burn out. And here's a look at something that's been going for about three years, right above the kitchen sink most of that time is my blue light dodecahedron. It's a bunch of C blue colored C7 incandescent lamps that I've uh, put glued into this dodecahedron uh, plexiglass shape like this and they're wired in series parallel combination so each one only gets 60 volts instead of 120 volt. I made a video about this very shortly after I made it about three years ago and it's been going ever since. Now the glass of the light bulb is clear glass coated with a, a blue transparent coating, some kind of paint stuff on here. And you can see it's kind of burnt off a little bit in some spots just because they've been going for so long. If these were on 120 volt each, then of course they'd be much brighter and they would have all burnt out by now, but they're still going for three years fading the blue paint is of course fading a little bit but for the most part it's it's still very vibrant a little dusty though 
Now out in the bedroom hallway, I have a CFL on a pull chain for when I need some extra light in here, but most of the time that remains off. And I just have this little contraption turned on all the time. These five individual different colored lights all on in a couple of configurations here. We've got the red, yellow, and red all in series. So each one of those gets 40 volts. These are all 120 volt rated lamps, but um, the red, yellow, red get 40 volt. And then the green and blue are in series with each other. So they each get 60 volts. And the reason for that is just to keep them all of the, re the same relative brightness because of course with the distribution of color spectrum coming off of an incandescent filament, it's uh, more towards the red and yellow end, it's gonna be a lot brighter. And so if you make the filament dimmer for a red and yellow lamp, then, then um, dimmer than the green and the blue, then of course they're all gonna be relatively the same brightness regardless of the color. Now this thing has been going constantly for about five and a half years since I made it. Here's a few pictures of it when I first made it. You can see I just soldered all the light bulbs together on some thick copper wire and then uh, put them, put a bunch of hot glue all around it to keep them in place and very well insulated everything with some stuff called liquid electrical tape. Really awesome stuff. And like I said, these things have been going five and a half years. I have no idea how much longer they're gonna go. I would expect that either the green or the blue would go out first since those are operating at a higher voltage. And then I'll just keep it going, um, maybe for a few more years after that. And then eventually the red, yellow, red string of light bulbs is gonna go out too. And then that'll be it, it'll go in the trash. Now in the bathroom, hanging right above the toilet, is another couple of incandescent lights here. These are about the size of a C7, but they're not quite C7 glass envelope. They're, uh, they're industrial light indicator lamps, um, 120 volt rated. Here's a closer view. I got these lights mounted inside a couple of glass jars of some slightly different color. I think these jars came from some kind of a gift basket of fruits and jams or nuts or something like that many years ago, probably about five years ago. I think it's when I first made this and put it up four or five years ago, a little dusty on top. And you can look inside, that's one of the lights right there, another one over here. They are in series. I have them wired in series and hot glued to a piece of plexiglass that's right here in the middle. And just hanging from the wire right here. Um, and of course I got this brass wire on the outside just holding it all together. And like I said, this thing's been going for about five years ago, just making some very dim light this thing is just about bright enough to use the bathroom in the middle of the night without interrupting my night vision. So this thing is very well worth the effort to put it together and hang it here. And of course, with the glass jars, it is quite decorative too. In the bedroom, we've got this bluish purple glass jar, probably a Noxzema cream or something like that was in this jar at one point, but anyway, I uh, put a plug on it, mounted very nicely, and put a whole bunch of light bulbs inside there. Each one of them is rated 28 volts, and I have a string of eight of them in series. As a matter of fact, I've got two strings of eight in here, each one wired in series. Here's some photos of it from when I first made it, and I put a switch in here too, so that when I flip the switch like this, then I can alternate between one string or both strings or the other string. And that's mostly because when I first made it, I wasn't quite sure how hot it would get, how bright it would be. So I wanted the option to, to be able to have all 16 lights at the same time. 
or I could just have eight going at a time for many years and then eventually when that one blows out then I can just open it up flip the switch and then I've got the other string of lights to ready to go for the next however many years that it's gonna go and if you're curious how I got that kind of action out of a tiny little switch inside this thing well it's a double pole three position slide switch so Here's in blue, that's the switch and it's pins on the bottom of it. In green is all the wires and connections between the pins. And then in red, I show the three different positions and the connections, the internal connections in the switch for each individual position. And you can just follow the, the current and show you exactly what light bulbs are gonna be on in any given position. Finally, out in the living room, I've got this little Christmas tree night light, and this thing is really, really old. I've got quite a story behind this thing. It's made of this plastic that was you know, dripped into a mold, obviously, uh, with, you can, you can tell that the, the mold first had the, the this different colored plastic Christmas ornaments dipped here and all the little spheres in the mold and then they just and also the base here and the gold colored star and then they filled in the rest of the mold with this green translucent plastic and it's it's a rather dark color not a whole lot of light is going to shine through there and it's, this initially had a neon lamp a little tiny NE2 neon lamp or equivalent and it was really, really dim because there's no way that any orange light is going to shine through this thing efficiently. There was some light going through, but not nearly as much as what could have gone if it had been a red or, or orange or, or even a completely transparent color. So here's a look at this thing when it had its original neon lamp inside of it. Hardly any light shining through it at all. And here's a look at the lamp itself that was on the inside of it. And then I just took that off of the plug base and replaced it with an incandescent light bulb. This was some one-off special light bulb that I happened to have. It actually had two light bulb filaments inside the, the glass. So I put the two of them in series and then wired it up and let it go. And it was decently bright but it didn't last very long maybe about half a year or so before it blew out and then my second iteration was to put in a small light bulb this time a General Electric 387 that's a 28 volt lamp and of course since it's 28 volts I had to limit the current with a couple of capacitors because if I use resistors it would just get too hot so I just happened to have these high voltage electrolytic capacitors that I put in there. And even if it was operating at a lower voltage than 28 volts, it still generated quite a bit of heat, which eventually ate away at the capacitors and caused them to dry up and fail. And so finally, I decided to use some ceramic capacitors. I got four of these one microfarad ceramic caps in there in series parallel combination and then that's what I have in the lamp currently and that's been going for a good three years or so. And we can have a quick look at some other lights which are not on all the time but I do make an effort to increase their longevity and that's all these C9 clear glass incandescent light bulbs that I have hanging around in the kitchen. They're all wired down to this dimmer switch that I mounted especially just, just for this. The, uh, the regular chandelier up there, that's on its own individual light switch that's mounted in the wall, but I wanted to have a separate dimmer switch just for the C9s so I can dim them down just like that to any nice light level that I want. And this is what we usually use most of the time is just all these light bulbs these are two strings of 25 lamps each. I bought them at Target years ago in a after a Christmas sale. I think they were 70% off. So that was a good deal, getting all these C9s real cheap and put them up here in the kitchen. They've been here for a good three years, I think now. 
use them quite a bit. Now, of course, they do make quite a bit of heat, too, especially when I have them on full blast, but it's really only a few days during the summer, some of the hottest days of the summer that that becomes a problem, but any other time during the year, they are very nice, very, very nice ambiance coming off of these things. And here's another after Christmas Target special. I've got this bunch of strings of what the box calls Edison lamps because it's really just ordinary um, filament, the same kind of filament that you would see in a C9, but they've got this much larger glass envelope around it with a little nub on the, the tip of it there to make it look antique and coated with what seems like a, a gold colored metal sputtering on the inside but it's probably just aluminum on the inside and then they coat it with, uh, with a yellow coating on the outside of the glass so they do make a nice yellow light coming off of them and i have them powered on a dimmer switch right down here it's a lutron credenza so i can put them at maximum brightness or make them a little dim turn them off entirely they're also on a wall switch too so i can just flip them on and off like that but normally keep it at about 70 or 80 percent brightness and a couple of them have burnt out actually quite a few have burnt out a total of 12 now at this point have burnt out from the four strings that i bought initially with 10 lamps on each string so now i'm operating 28 lamps that are still good and eventually i think this next one is going to go soon too I notice that these lights eventually grow dim before they finally blow out. It's unfortunate that these things blow out so quickly. I don't know if that's a manufacturing defect as a result of the metal sputtering on the inside of the, the glass envelope, or if they're actually intended to burn out quickly so that they might get used for just one or two years and then they'd have to be replaced with something else and uh, the manufacturer can get more money from the consumer. So that's a quick look at some special lights that I have in my apartment. The night lights, I keep them going 24 seven and uh, the hallway lights and all that and the one above my the entry door and the one outside the entry door, I keep those going all the time. Of course, it is gonna affect the electric bill a little bit but I don't worry about that one bit because it'll add just a few dollars per year and it's really nothing to be concerned about. And of course, all the other incandescents that I have here, you know, sure, LEDs are more efficient, but I'm, I, I just tend to be old school with my own personal at-home preferences with the, the LEDs, I mean, with the incandescents. I do use LEDs or CFLs where appropriate, but when I want the, the nice, warm glow of incandescent filaments that's where i put them and of course if i want longevity of a night light going 24 7 without any worries about having it turn on with a light sensor or turn on manually myself then i just use the incandescence with um, cutting the voltage in half or a portion of the the, the rated voltage, I keep it going constantly without any concerns at all. Just let it go and it's, they work beautifully. Like I said, these things have been going for three or four or five years in some cases. If you learned something from this video, then please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you later.